Hey y'all, Damon here. Hey, this is going to be another lesson on the warm-up routine. This is going to be part two of that. This is going to be if you had more time to warm up, not just five or ten minutes, but you could think about more long-term goals. So here we go. We're going to start out with some of those chromatic things. We're going to add some new stuff to this chromatic. Now how the chromatic started out was just one, two, three, four with down-up picking. This type of thing. Now when you get up here, you could go down, you go up to the fifth and come back that way. So without taking too long on this, that's basically what's going on here. That was chromatic exercise number one. Take that all the way up the neck. Now number two was when we skip strings, like... So you got one on the E string, two on the A, three on the E, four on the A. Still doing your down up picking. Now we're gonna go down to the fifth string. Five, four, five, four. So that's five on the little string. So you get the idea. Now other things we could do with the chromatic would be, think about where the accent is on that one and two and. So what if we change the accent to be on the two? So the two is like the downbeat. So this would be an upbeat on the one. And one and two and three and four. Right? So the one is a pickup note and the two is the real downbeat. And one and two and four. We come back, we do the same thing with the up to start. on the third fret. So the third is going to be an up stroke pickup note. And then up on the seven. So that's one thing you can do there. So that would be putting the accent on the second note. Now how about if we put the accent on the third note? One and two and three. Now we put it on the pinky note, so it's going to be like three pickup notes. And as always, run that all the way up the neck. Okay, um, another thing I like to do with chromatics is get into a thing where you're just kind of uh, improvising. And then we're getting into this, you can also swing that kind of thing instead of just going one, two, three, and four, and E, B. Put the swing on there. Mix it up. You know, mix it up, come up with little things that you think sound cool and musical little tidbits and things. Okay, so that's some of the chromatic exercise things. And obviously, like I said, go up all the way up the neck as much, much time as you have. Keep it going. You know what I mean? You're only going to get better. You're only going to get used to the different widths of frets. So let's go back and look at the pentatonic minor positions. Here's the first one. Now we're going to do exercises with that. We're going to go up four notes at a time with our down, up, down, up picking. And then I'm going to start on this three. Three, oh, two, oh. And I'm going up the strings as I go there. Three on the E string. And then up stroke, open two on the A. And then up stroke on the D string, open. So I'll do the first two sets of four again. 
Okay, then we're gonna start on the A string. Then we're gonna come down to the, go to the two, the B note here on the A string. Two, O, two, O. And then we're on the D string open. See how that works? Two, O, three, O. And then we got O, three, O, three. And we're coming back. Start with the down stroke, so we still have down, up, down, up, and then down, up, down, up, and that was O, 3, O, 2, and the G. And eventually you want to get it where you don't have any pauses between the sets of four. So try that with me. Uh, three and four and... Back three and four and all right. Now there's another exercise we can do with threes. So we're gonna go those little sets of threes like that. So this becomes interesting at the right hand picking because you got down, up, down, and then you got up, down, up on that next set. So I'm gonna go kind of slow so you can kind of see that. can be a little tricky. You got your down, up, down, and then you got up, down, up. And you can put in some little like pull-offs and stuff as you go. Also do hammer ons on that other one, the fours. So we take that a little slow, we got sometimes I'll put a different finger in there so I can get it going kind of quick, you know. Sometimes you might share a fret with the same finger. Sometimes it'd be like a riff like a Yeah, you could have dragged that same finger, but you might use that different one so they get that clarity. They don't, they don't sound like they're like ringing together if you don't want that. Okay, so then let's look at second position. We're going to do the, this is the position, second position, E minor pentatonic. We're going to do the fours exercise. They take a little bit of time to get used to, but you get used to them. Sometimes you might move to those easier fingers if you want. All right, and they got the, the thirds. We're going to start on the second note. We always start on the second note on the threes one. Not thirds, but threes in it. So down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down. Okay, third position. Four, 
first. That was a little bit tricky. Threes. This is a little bit easier than the other. Okay, fourth position is the, here's the scale. And if you want a more of a breakdown of all these, I have a, a different video that I'll put a link to right here um, that shows you, that takes more time on all these pentatonic positions. Uh, here's the fours. Sorry if you're going fast on this, but it's basically a kind of a thing, like once you understand the concept of it, then you don't really need to watch somebody play every note of it too much. You can kind of get it in your head and you can do it yourself, you know. So here's the thirds on this. Once you do these a few times in a few different positions, you got you get the hang of it. fifth position fours all right then we got the uh, threes Okay, and then let's look at um, another thing that you can add to your warm-up routine is arpeggios. So we'll look at the arpeggios in the key of G. So here is G major 7 arpeggio. Okay, so 3... And then two and five on the A string, and then four and five on the D string, and then four on the G string, three on the B string, two and three on the E. And you can add that two there at the end. This is the root, though, of course. Now I'm trying to do totally alternate picking, even jumping up those strings too. So down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up. Down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down. Okay, now here's the A minor seven. And I have another lesson video that goes into arpeggios more too, so you can check that out. So five and eight, and then seven, and then five, seven, and then five, and then five, eight, five, eight. Five, seven, five, seven. So that's like the A minor pentatonic scale, but it has no D's in it. So it only has the A, C, E, G, A, C, E, G, A, C. Okay, so the same shape for the B minor seven, the three chord of the key of G. And then we got C major seven on the eighth fret here. Eight, or eight, seven, ten, nine, ten, nine, eight, seven, eight. Same as the G was. Now D7 is up here in the 10th fret. 10, 9, 12, 
And then I'm gonna move my first finger to this 10 here on the D string. That helps put the rest of it play out easy. So 10, 9, 12, and then 10, 12, and then 11, 10, 13 on the B string, 10, 14 on the E string. We can use that little note down there if we want, that's C. Now here's the E minor, seven. Same as the other minor sevens. 12, 15, and then 14, and then 12, 14, 12, 12, 15, 12, 15. Okay, then we have the seven chord, the F sharp minor seven flat fifth. Okay, so this is gonna be 14th and 17th. Actually, let's do it down here. We'll see it next to the G. So it's gonna be two and five, and then three, that's the flat fifth. So this is part of, that'd be just part of an F sharp minor, those two notes, F sharp A, and then you'd normally have that one, but this is that flat fifth here. So two, five, three, and then the next string, two, four, and then two, five, five, two, five. So five, two, and then five, and then five, two, and then four, two, and then three, five, two. And then back to G. So let's look at all those chords. There's a G major seven. Here's the A minor seven, B minor seven, C major seven, and I'm doing like a thumb on that eighth fret. You could do it this way too. I kind of like the ring of that. You can get that higher note there. So that's it. Seven, eight, nine, nine. With the eight on the bass on the E right there, muting the A string. C major seven. Then we got D dominant seven. Sometimes you might play it like that, kind of a jazz way. Okay, then here we got the E minor 7. And then this is the half diminish the F sharp minor 7 flat 5. It's like 9, 10, 9, 10. And that's the F sharp bass note. And then you'd be back to like your G major 7. Now let's do this as well. Let's look at those arpeggios, but if we were in the key of C. So that's going to make everything different because we're on the A string now with our bass note instead of the E string. So we have C major 7 chord. So that's 3, 2, 5, 4, 5, 5, 3, 7. We can use that 2 back here. C major 7. Now here's D minor 7, the, two, the second chord in the key of C. So that's five, eight, seven, and then five, seven, six, five, eight. D minor seven. And then we got E minor seven, seventh fret, same shape. And then we would have F major seven. That's eight, 10, nine, 10. And you do the eight on the bottom too. F major seven. So that's 8, 7, 10, 9, 10, 10, 8, 12. Then let's go down here for the G7. So we got 3, 5, 3, 4, 3, 3 for the chord. Then we do it. This is the dominant 7. That's where you move that first finger there, that third fret. Dominant seven has that flat seventh note. That's why we could use that one, two frets down from there with that. Okay, then we got the sixth chord is the A minor seven. And then we would have the seven chord, which would be the minor seven flat five. Here's another way to do that. Seven. 7, 7, nothing on the A, muted, and then 6 on the B string. 
So that's your minor seven looks like that, but when you flat the five, you get that note in there. So that would be. That one doesn't get used a whole lot. Then you'd be back to your C major seven. There's a cool little C chord, C major six nine. To end on a little tasty jazzy note. So the different inversions there, this is like a three, two, two, three, three. And then when you come up here to the seventh fret, it's like seven, 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 eight, eight. And if you hit that eight up there, you can. And then I went to the octave of this one up here on the highest. 15th and 14th. Another good one like that is the minor 6 9. That's when you go 3 1 2 3 3. All right, well, that has been a warm up routine part two, the kind of extended if you have more time version. So, thanks everybody for watching. Please like and subscribe. Lots more coming. Let me know what you guys want to learn. And comment and let me know uh, like where you guys listening from, where you guys watching from. And uh, peace out. We'll see you soon. Thanks a lot.